Have you ever tried to use a pen tool to draw a smooth curve and it's just not going where you plan it to be? It's got these weird jagged edges. Well, that's where our first tool comes in. It's a smooth tool. So if we go over to the left here, have our line that we want to smooth it out connect, uh, selected, we can activate the smooth tool, which is under the shaper tool here. And you can go over and just with your left mouse button, drag along the path that you kind of want it to be and where you want it to smooth out like that. Now, I didn't know about this tool for the longest time, but since I did, I kind of drew way different than when I did not know about it. For example, if I draw something like this, I know I can simply just smooth it out with a smooth tool um, afterwards. So if I want to create nice smooth lines, I can simply just draw jagged lines first and smooth them out later like this. But yeah, that's our first tool, the smooth tool. All right, our next tool is going to be the width tool. Now I have drawn two very unflattering curves here and we're just gonna adjust the tool, uh, adjust the width on these curves to make them look a little bit more daunting or have a little bit more presence on the page. So what the width tool allows you to do, it's uh, right here. It might be under all of these, but width tool is a shift W command. But what it allows you to do is add these points where you can adjust the width of the line. So as you can see, I simply clicked on the path here and added a width. And if I uh, hold my left mouse button, I can adjust the width of uh, that section where I have selected. So if I want all of these to be a little bit wider where it curves like that, similar here, and maybe taper down where it's more flat like that, I can do that with the width tool. And what's cool about the width tool is after you actually have uh, the shape built out, you can simply select the path, go up to objects, and then you can expand the appearance to adjust it as uh, a shape. So for example, you can change the color or you can uh, use your direct selection tool and change one of the anchor points like that. Uh, or if you want to add another shape, say I would want to taper this off with a circle here like this, then I can simply make that a little bit more perfect there. Then I can simply just select these two and using the shape builder or pathfinder tool, I can merge these two and that becomes one shape by itself. Now I can go here and kind of also taper this off like that. And as you can see, it's already a lot better looking than what I had, just the original line here. And the shape, or not the shape tool, sorry, the, the width tool also works with uh, enclosed shapes. So if I want, again, just this part very thick and then the other parts thinner, I could do that as well. So you can see this heart uh, already looks better than it has when it's just one single stroke. All right, so the next tool we're going to go over is the Shape Builder tool. It's over to the left here, right underneath the Width tool. And the shortcut for it is Shift M. I actually use this command a lot, uh, just because it's really similar to the Trim command in other programs, such as uh, AutoCAD. So this is also really similar to our Pathfinder tools, but I do find it uh, a lot easier to use. So basically what I've drawn here is a bunch of bubbles. They're a little smaller and bigger on the top. But as you can see here, there's a lot of uh, overlapping lines where I don't really want them. So I can use the Shift M or Shape Builder tool to kind of get rid of this. So what I can do is drag my mouse across these shapes and it'll trim out the lines that I don't want. So if I want that bubble to look like that, I drag across all the different lines that I don't want and it'll simply cut them out like that. Same thing here, if I just want these to be cut out, I can do that. Now, one thing to keep in mind when using the Shape Builder tool is that there are going to be a lot of these things that are happening. As you can see, this was not cut perfectly and there is a gap in between. And one way you can address this is go into the layers, uh, hold shift when you click the middle of the eye icon, and then you can see where your path uh, for your stroke is actually uh, placed. So this way you can select everything again and then use the shift M command. And this will help you identify where your lines are a lot easier. So I don't really want that one. So I can get rid of that. And it also helps 
to make sure that none of these lines are overlapping or there's extra uh, spaces in here anywhere just to make sure that your drawing is very clean across the board. Now you can simply use control click on that eye again to bring back your shape. And there we go, that's basically the shape builder tool. Okay, and picking back right where we left off, the next tool we're gonna use is the paint bucket tool. Now this one, a lot of people don't know, but it's a really simple way to basically color off all of the art that you just drew. So it is right under the Shape Builder tool. If we right click on where we just use the Shape Builder tool, uh, we can go over to the Live Paint Bucket tool. And the shortcut for that is K. Now before we do this, we want to basically select everything that we want to paint bucket or color in. Now if I press K with everything selected and click anywhere in the drawing, uh, Illustrator will basically define all the borders for us so that we can color in these bubbles as we please. So for example, if I want these bubbles to be a light blue color like this, I can simply go in and just click all of these separate boundaries and Illustrator will help me uh, basically color these in as I like. Now I can obviously go a darker color on the bottom and then it gets lighter as we go up like that. Or I can do this however I want. Now we can also change the color of these individually. Now we can't do this unless we expand it, which is the button up here. So make sure you expand this and then you're gonna have to ungroup it maybe a couple times just to get each shape isolated out. So if I just want this shape here, you can see that it is simply a uh, color here made by the paint bucket tool. Now, if I wanna get rid of all of the outlines here, I can select the outlines and just get rid of them and now you can see that these are nice bubbles that we can work with. I'm just gonna go ahead and undo, and then we're gonna soften the lines a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and just create a little bit of a highlight for these guys, just to make it look a little bit better and a little bit more like bubbles. Now you might be wondering why Justin Trudeau is on my screen here, but worry not, it's to demonstrate our last tool, which is the image trace tool. Now, if you import any image into Illustrator and just select the image, you can see there's an image trace option uh, on the top here, and there's many, many different options. But if I just go to the high fidelity photo, what it does is analyze all the colors and it'll basically create a vector drawing from the photo here. So if I zoom in, you can see that his eyes is made up of a patch of colors, uh, so is his nose and his lips. Now we can also go over some of the other settings. So if I just undo really quickly, select the image again, uh, we can also make it really simple. So if I only want three colors, you can see that Illustrator analyzes the image and turns this drawing into three different colors. Uh, it can be a quick way to vectorize uh, any photo if you just select six colors or 16 colors. Uh, but still, if you draw it, it does, does turn out a lot better. But if you want something fast, this can be something that you can do in a couple seconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the black and white logo here. And if we want to manipulate any of the colors in here, we're going to have to expand the image and also ungroup. And if I want to change the black color here to something more of a gray color, then I can select one part of the black and then go over here to select similar objects. It'll select all the black in this image and then I can simply change the color to whatever I like here. Um, another use for this, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this really quickly. Uh, another great use for the image trace tool is that since I do study a lot of architecture, uh, I do need a lot of people in my drawings. So if I do just bring a cluster of people into Illustrator and then I image trace all of them, you can see that it'll give me the uh, uh, silhouettes right away. So if I uh, again expand this and then ungroup this, delete the background, and you might there might be some errors like that. Uh, so we're obviously not going to use this person, but you can already see that I already have a bunch of silhouettes that I can place into my drawing and each one of them is fully controllable like that. Just make sure you uh, group the ones where there's one or more color like that. 
so all of these are now ready to use in any drawing. Uh, but yeah, it's a nice little trick to use this for some of my drawings. So if you guys learned anything from this video, please don't hesitate to give me a like and comment down below on what you have learned from the video. I'm really curious as to what you already knew and what you didn't know. Uh, but if you don't mind, please also do subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.